Chapter thirty two of History of the World War by Francis March and Richard Beamish. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Marianne. Chapter thirty two Germany's Object Lesson to the United States. During the first two years of the war, many Americans, especially those in the West, observed the great events which were happening with great interest, no doubt, but with a feeling of detachment. The war was a long way off. The Atlantic Ocean separated Europe from America, and it seemed almost absurd to think that the Great War could ever affect us. In the year 1916, however, two events happened which seemed to bring the war to our door. The first was the arrival at Baltimore, on July 9th, of the Deutschland, a German submarine of great size, built entirely for commercial purposes, and the second was the appearance, on the 7th of October, of a German war submarine in the harbor at Newport, Rhode Island, and its exploit on the following day when it sunk a number of british and neutral vessels just outside the three-mile line on the atlantic coast the performances of these two vessels were equally suggestive but the popular feeling with regard to what they had done was very divergent the voyage of the deutschland roused the wildest admiration but the action of the u fifty three stirred up the deepest indignation yet the voyages of each showed with equal clearness that however much america might consider herself separated from the great war the new scientific invention the submarine had annihilated space and america too was now but a neighbor of the nations at war the voyage of the deutschland was a romance in itself it was commanded by captain paul koenig a german officer of the old school he had been captain of the schleswig of the north german lloyd and of other big liners when the power of the british fleet drove german commerce from the seas he had found himself without a job and as he phrased it drifting about the country like a derelict one day in september nineteen fifteen he was asked to meet herr alfred lohmann an agent of the north german lloyd line and surprised by an offer to navigate a submarine cargo ship from germany to america captain koenig who seemed to have been in every way an admirable personage at once consented he has told us the story of his trip in his interesting book called the voyage of the deutschland the deutschland itself was three hundred feet long thirty feet wide and carried one thousand tons of cargo and a crew of twenty-nine men it cost half a million dollars but paid for itself in the first trip according to captain koenig the voyage on the whole seems to have been most enjoyable he understood his boat well and had watched its construction before setting out on his voyage he carefully trained his crew and experimented with the deutschland until he was thoroughly familiar with all its peculiarities the cargo was composed of dye stuffs and the ship was well supplied with provisions and comforts in his description of the trip he lays most emphasis upon the discomfort resulting from heavy weather and from storms he was able to avoid all danger from hostile ships by the very simple process of diving no english ship approached him closely as he was always able to see them from a distance usually observing their course by means of their smoke one of his liveliest adventures however occurred when attempting to submerge suddenly during a heavy sea on the appearance of a destroyer the destroyer apparently never observed the deutschland but in the endeavor to dive quickly the submarine practically stood on its head and dived down into the mud where it found itself held fast Captain Koenig, however, was equal to the emergency, and by balancing and trimming the tanks he finally restored the center of gravity and released his boat. A considerable portion of his trip was passed upon the surface as he only submerged when there was suspicion of danger. According to his story, his men kept always in the highest spirits. They had plenty of music and doubtless appreciated the extraordinary nature of their voyage. An amusing incident during the trip was the attempt to camouflage his ship by a framework made of canvas and so constructed as to give the outline of a steamer. One day a hostile steamer appeared in the distance and Captain Koenig proceeded to test his disguise. After great difficulties, especially in connection with the production of smoke, he finally had the whole construction fairly at work. The steamer, which had been peacefully going its way, on seeing the new ship suddenly changed her course and steered directly toward the Deutschland. It evidently took the Deutschland for some kind of a wreck and was hurrying to give its assistance. Captain Koenig at once pulled off his superstructure and revealed himself as a submarine, and the strange vessel veered around and hurried off as fast as it could. On the arrival of the Deutschland in America, Captain Koenig and his crew found their difficulties over. All arrangements had been made by representatives of the North German Lloyd for their safety and comfort. As they ran up Chesapeake Bay they were greeted by the whistles of the neutral steamers that they passed. 
the moving picture companies immortalized the crew and they were treated with the utmost hospitality the allied governments protested that the deutschland was really a war vessel and on the twelfth of july a commission of three american naval officers was sent down from washington to make an investigation the investigation showed the deutschland was absolutely unarmed and the american government decided not to interfere the position of the allies was that a submarine even though without guns or torpedoes was practically a vessel of war from its very nature and for it to pretend to be a merchant vessel was as if some great german man of war should dismount its guns and pass them over to some tender and then undertake to visit an american port they argued that if the submarine would come out from harbor it might be easily fitted with a detachable torpedo tube and become as dangerous as any u-boat even without arms it might easily sink an unarmed merchant vessel by ramming but the united states was not convinced and american citizens rather admired the genial captain his return was almost as uneventful as his voyage out at the very beginning he had trouble in not being able to rise after an experimental dive this misadventure was caused by a plug of mud which had stopped up the opening of the manominator but the difficulty was overcome and he was able to pass under water between the british ships which were on the lookout his return home was a triumph hundreds of thousands of people gathered along the banks of the vesser filled with the greatest enthusiasm poems were written in his honor and his appearance was everywhere greeted with enthusiastic applause the germans felt sure that through the deutschland and similar boats they had broken the british blockade captain koenig made a second voyage landing at new london connecticut on november first where he took on a cargo of rubber nickel and other valuable commodities on november sixteenth in attempting to get away to sea he met with a collision with the tug t a scott jr and had to return to new london for repairs he concluded his voyage however without difficulty in spite of his success the germans did not make any very great attempt to develop a fleet of submarine cargo boats another german act which brought home to americans the possibility of the submarine the visit of the u-53 was a very different sort of matter u-53 was a german submarine of the largest type on october seventh nineteen sixteen it made a sudden appearance at newport and its captain lieutenant captain hans rose was entertained as if he were a welcome guest he sent a letter to the german ambassador at washington and received visitors in his beautiful boat the u-53 was a war submarine two hundred and thirteen feet long with two deck guns and four torpedo tubes it had been engaged in the war against allied commerce in the mediterranean captain rose paid formal visits to rear admiral austin knight commander of the united states naval district stationed at newport and rear admiral albert gleaves commander of the american destroyer flotilla at that place and then set out secretly to his destination on the next day the news came in that the u-53 had sunk five merchant vessels these were the strathdean which was torpedoed the west point a british freighter also torpedoed the stefano a passenger liner between new york and halifax which the submarine attempted to sink by opening its sea valves but was finally torpedoed the bloomersdijk a dutch freighter and the christian knudsen a norwegian boat the american steamer kansan was also stopped but allowed to proceed when the submarine began its work wireless signals soon told what was happening and admiral knight with the newport destroyer flotilla hurried to the rescue these destroyers picked up two hundred and sixteen men and acted with such promptness that not a single life was lost the action of the u-53 produced intense excitement in america the newspapers were filled with editorial denunciation and the people were roused to indignation the american government apparently took the ground that the germans were acting according to law and according to their promise to america they had given warning in each case and allowed the crews of the vessels which they sunk to take to their boats this was believed to be a fulfillment of their pledge not to sink merchant vessels without warning and without saving human lives unless the ship attempts to escape or offers resistance the general feeling however of american public opinion was that it was a brutal act in the case of the stefano there were ninety-four passengers these together with the crew were placed adrift in boats at eight o'clock in the evening in a rough sea sixty miles away from the nearest land if the american destroyer fleet had not rushed to the rescue it is extremely likely that a great many of these boats would never have reached land the german government did not save these human lives it was the american navy which did that but technicalities aside the pride of the american people was wounded they could not tolerate a situation in which american men of war should stand idly by and watch a submarine in a leisurely manner sink ships engaged in american trade 
whose passengers and crews contained many American citizens. It was another one of those foolish things that the Germans were constantly doing, which gave them no appreciable military advantage, but stirred up against them the sentiment of the world. The Germans perhaps were anxious to show the power of the submarines, and to give America an object lesson in that power. They wished to make plain that they could destroy overseas trade, and that if the United States should endeavor to send troops across the water they would be able to sink those troops. The Germans probably never seriously contemplated a blockade of the American coast. The U-53 returned to its base and the danger was ended. American commerce went peacefully on, and the net result of the German audacity was in the increase of bitterness in the popular feeling toward the German methods. End of chapter 32